Uh, well, I have, I represent Liberty Multimedia, and I'm really excited for this show you got coming up at the Casbah on September 18th out in Hamilton there, and it seems like you've got some good opening acts for the show and everything like that. I'm wondering, how do you go about picking local supporting acts? Like, is there any kind of, like, criteria or anything you see in the performers? Or? The thing is, I don't, I, don't, I, I don't like the way the shows are set up that um, uh, the, the door thing, because when the door things work out, then the, the uh, main act has to pay the other acts, and I feel the money should go all the, to, the, directly to the to the main performer. I don't feel that we should have to, to dish out money out of our own pocket. I don't like that. And I feel that the restaurants should have buyouts so the people can get meals because we're traveling far, and it was like two thousand dollars to rent this car. You know, it's uh, everything costs money, and I love my fans, and and I, I'm out, uh, and I just, um, I've had some weird dreams and on this tour that have been outstanding. Like what? An out of body experience that really freaked me out when I was in Rhode Island, uh, and then I got clown addiction after I had a nightmare about Bozo stabbing me in the stomach. And then I, then I, I, a reality dawned on me. My favorite clown was uh, excommunicated from WGM. They don't even have any pictures of Monty Melvin, who was the funniest clown that was ever on the Bozo show. And I found out there was a conspiracy that had him and blackballed off the show. And then found out my other favorite clown, who I loved, conspired and blackballed off the show, which really broke my heart because I liked both of the clowns. Yeah, I mean, that is a difficult situation, man, for sure. But I kind of wanted to talk about some of the collaborations you've had recently. Like, they're pretty interesting. Like, I was wondering how the Jad Fair collaboration came about because I like Donald Duck better than I like Mickey Mouse was a really good track I was digging. So how did the Jad Fair come about? Yeah, I, um, I, when I grew up, I always liked Donald Duck better than uh, Mickey Mouse. Donald Duck had class. He uh, was the uh, meat and potatoes I, I felt that uh, Monty Melvin the Clown should have been uh, pushed more than Cookie the Clown or Bozo. Yeah, I agree with what you're saying there, man. But like the Chicago radio station WLS yeah, doesn't care. They kind of like having have Monty Melvin excommunicated. They don't even have a picture up. And Disney went more for Mickey Mouse. You know, and. Donald Duck had class, he was funny, he was like Don Rickles, I mean, he was a spicy tama tamale, he just had energy, I love that energy that Donald Duck had. Yeah, absolutely, and another cool collaboration that I enjoyed was the Cool Keith collaboration on Space Ranger, so how did that come about? And it seems like there's certain rap music that, you know, sonically you're into, I noticed you're a fan of Ka, so I'm kind of curious, like, how did the Cool Keith collaboration come about? Well, Jonah's very talented, and Jonah knows this, uh, was fans of Cool Keith. He's from, I met cool, uh, I met a drummer who went to uh, high school with uh, Cool Keith, and I didn't know how famous he is. He's a drummer that plays uh, very close to me at the Hollywood Bowl. He's super talented, and he's, he's strong into politics, and he, he, he's like the son I had, never had, but he's very talented, very and uh, he had pictures. He said, we showed me pictures. I went to high school with Cool Keith. His mother's a very talented lawyer somewhere in New York. Um, but anyway, uh, I, uh, Cool Keith was cool. I got to meet him face to face at the um, at the uh, Comic Con this year in March. And uh, I wish I could have collaborated and done a song with him, but. Uh, you know, it just didn't work out. I, I want to do more collaboration with Cool Keith. I, I'm a strong believer in the UFO phenomenon. I was abducted as a kid. You can see the episode on the new spinoff that Tim and Eric gave me called I Love David. It's on the Channel 5 News. And uh, it's, you can learn all about me uh, by looking at that because I went to places where I grew up and homes I was born and raised in. And neighborhoods I grew up. I'm sorry to hear that, man, but I had a question about the Alien Saga, actually, because I noticed you had a bit of a situation where Laurent didn't want you to look at porn. So can you recap that story for maybe the people who aren't privy to it? It's, uh, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, a true story.
story. Um, I was, uh, at the time, I was uh, in the band with Adam Papagan, and we were, I did Christmas decorations where I used to live, when I used to be buried in the Inland Empire area. And uh, this, uh, I met this uh, guy at the Redlands uh, 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 aquatic uh, plant place, and we there was a chemistry between us, and we became good friends. And he called me, and when I was sitting lonely at La, La Brea Tar Pits, or I'm not, they don't allow artists or musicians at the La, La Brea Tar Pits, which is an infringement on my freedom of speech of um, November of last year. He said Donald Trump owns stock in uh, La Brea Tar Pits. Any kind of musicians or vendors, which is an infringement on my freedom of speech. Now, there's a lawyer out there because I was there for 40 years, um, and a lot of my fans met me there. And I'd like a lawyer out there to fight for me, get my rights to come back at La Brea Tar Pits. And they still wouldn't allow me to be at La Brea Tar Pits. I contacted the, the board of supervisors, uh, the county supervisors. And the guy uh, uh, didn't even bother to return my letters or phone calls. And when I finally got robbed, LifeLock did nothing to refund my wallet back to me or the cash inside of it. And I and I paid them a lot. They took lots and lots and lots of money out of my account. And I'm very, very disappointed. I'm sorry to hear about that, man. But I was kind of curious about Llama Dog and just like, you know, making it with Betsy Brown at Northridge College. Uh, uh, um be a part of that, be, uh, having them to be my, my insurance if anything happens to me anymore. Well, I'm sorry to hear about all that going on there, man, but I kind of was wondering about this one quote you had because you were saying even Jesus, the greatest man who trotted the globe, had relationship problems with people who didn't understand him, and it seems like maybe there's some people who don't understand where you're coming from with your art necessarily. Do you see yourself as a martyr for your art in any kind of way? Jesus Christ uh, faced the same kind of racism and discrimination I have faced at the Christian Science Church. Uh, the conservative Republican people that run the Christian Science Church never come to my shows. They, uh, they uh, were itching for the Junior Christian Science Bible lesson show to be taken off because uh, I, it was very ethnic -y and very liberal. And uh, they got their wish came come true when the city of Los Angeles uh, just, uh, uh, canceled public access in the year 2008. But it was a wonderful show. I had Jewish rabbis on there. I had Catholic priests on there. I had born-again Christian pastors on there. I uh, I uh, spoke against racism and bias and unfairness uh, that minorities go through in our, in our country and liberal whites go through in our country. It was a very wonderful show. It, it had a long run. It was on from 2000 and uh, and uh, to, uh, it ran from correction uh, 1998 to 2008. And it, it started in Los Angeles when, when it used to be Continental Cable Vision and, 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 and uh, Century Cable. They were bought out by Time Warner Cable and Spectrum, and it grew all across the United States. Now it's just, it's just on the Internet. Well, I mean, you get a lot of reach from the internet and everything like that. So, I mean, not the worst thing in the world. I mean, it's connected with you with, you with certain people, like, you know, the people who helm Burger Records and, you know, some of the supporting musicians for David Lieb Heart Band. And I'm kind of curious, like, like how you came across these genres and stuff like that. And if you have any plans for future projects like this in the future, because, like, the punk rock kind of thing is cool. I want to do more work. I just, uh, I, I, I'm just uh, saddened by... Uh... I'm grateful for all the fame I got from people that I worked in the past with, like Adam Papadan and Phil Shy. But fans like it, and they want to see uh, a second season of uh, I Love David. Yeah, absolutely, man. It was a great show. I originally did 10 shows, and um, um, the uh, 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 Time Warner is uh, now uh, uh, sold their, their stock to the WB and to Comcast. That's a difficult situation, man, but I understand you have an interesting theory about where penguins and polar bears come from. Can you talk about the origin of that? Yeah, well, the, um, the, uh, there's a race called the uh, Palladians, and just like we have dogs and cats as pets, um, uh, the Palladians that, um, uh, that taught the uh, Corindians vegetarian 
and, and how to be a vegetarian and, and to and, and Buddhism. That's where it came from. Is the uh, Corinthian race and the Palladian race. They had pets of penguins and pets of uh, uh, crashed. They ended up going of uh, uh, of the North Pole and they uh, lived off the fish and the ocean and could take the cold air and they had adopted like the uh, race called the Omegans to come from Star Caladan. They brought pigs and and, um, and cows to planet Earth. They're a, a race that are from uh, Star Caladan, which is 800 light years away from Earth. They're at, they've been at war with the Corinthians over space territory for 200 years. Uh, Elder Master Lacan told me all about it. He wrote me a letter about it. I talk about it on the I Love David show. Yeah, and you also have a podcast too, and it uh, seems like a pretty interesting journey, some insights into like the touring cycle and certain things like that too. So that's cool, and people should check that out. You know, and I love, I want to just go on the internet. I love Doug Brown. We're both from Illinois. Him and Eric did my genealogy, and he found out I'm, uh, this is shocking. I found out I'm Norwegian, German on both sides, and I and, and, and Swedish, Polish, which I didn't, which is really out of the thing, and, and, and Scotch Irish as well, and uh, American Apache uh, Blackfoot and Sumac Indian, um, and, uh, and uh, I was shocked to find out, and then I have Canadian, French, and Louisiana French was uh, as well. So, and I found out I had aristocracy in my family, which I didn't know I had. That's interesting, man, but you know. Um, Scottish, uh, McKinnon, Campbell, and German, Rex Singer, Kaiser, Brandt. And uh, anyway, uh, um, I, uh, well, I guess that. I'm a, 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 a stew of a, a, a lot of good things that make me more creative. Yeah, and speaking of some of the alien interactions, the Pickle Man and Mr. Moose inspired an interesting song. Can you talk about that experience with, you know, supernatural phenomenon? My parents moved, I'll tell you how that happened. My parents moved to Park Forest, Illinois. Um, um, I, uh, before we moved to Park Forest, Illinois, we lived on the south side of Chicago. The building's still there. 8136 South Ellis. My parents bought that uh, fourplex in, in 1961. And the policeman who used to own the place said, by the way, my three dead German shepherds were shot and this and, and on the first floor they uh, from a burglar. And since then, uh, the orange ghosts uh, have been coming and licking people and tickling people and doing odds and ends in people's apartment. And my dad understood what he was saying because my dad lived somewhere where he grew up where a dragon would would, uh, would come in the window and scare him as a little boy. And then it would fade away when the daytime came. And they found out the same uh, basement apartment that he lived in that the person had a giant uh, a lizard that he didn't feed that died. And it came back as a dragon, and I I could see that see that uh, lizards uh, and uh, and uh, other uh, 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 animals as well as humans come back in forms to their old place. So uh, anyway, uh, at 8136 South Ellis, three German shepherds came back and haunted me and tickled me as a kid, and pulled the clothes out of the the. Uh, closet, played piano. After I did the dishes, they threw the dishes all over the place. They dumped the, the goldfish food in the, uh, the whole container of goldfish food in the goldfish tank. They were devious characters. Yeah, so that's what inspired me to do the Trickle Man and Mr. Moose. It was based on something real. And then it didn't just happen there. My, my parents moved to Park Forest, Illinois in 1968. And there I experienced... Uh, my sister, I paid her money to take care of my uh, fish tank, and I had some tadpoles in there. And they became frogs just before I left to go to Pictures on Limits at Camp, which is a Christian science camp in Colorado. And my sister did not feed the 
fish in the huge fish tank I had. So the fish, the, the, the frogs came back and stared at me and haunted me as a child when I lived at 117 Westwood Drive. So I have another song about them called Ghost Frog. Yeah, it sounds like you've had a couple interesting experiences in that regard, but, you know, you've been really great with your time, man. I'm curious, as we're wrapping things up here, though, I understand you're, you know, steadfastly religious and everything like that. I'd like you to do me a favor. Okay. I'd like you to write a serious letter or email, WGM. I think it's wrong that they don't mention or have any pictures of Monty Melvin. He was my hero. He was my favorite clown. And I, I don't, the Chicago politics took him out and took him down, and I don't think it's right at all. I'll definitely get that situated going forward for sure, man, but in wrapping things up, though. He was my favorite clown as well, but I felt they were both in competition for the same part uh, when, uh, when Bozo came back. Bozo was off the show for eight years, so he was replaced by Monty Melvin. And he was the funniest Jewish comedian clown you ever wanted to meet. He, he told jokes and riddles on the back of his hat. He looked like the, uh, the Joker from Glasses. And he was really uh, a, a funny, clever clown. And, and I thought he should have been given his own show because he was more funnier than Bozo and Cookie. And, um, a diverse talent for sure, man. And the same can be said for you. And people can check that out at the CASBA going on September 18th in Hamilton, Ontario. Going to be a great show. David Leba Hart going to be performing and just going to be an awesome time. I really appreciate all the insights and everything, David. Best of luck with the rest of the tour and enjoy the rest of your day, man. You're the greatest, as Jackie Gleason would say. Thanks for letting me be a part of it. Thank you. Bye.